Hello. In this video, we are going to discuss the zero point energy and how it is related to computational chemistry, inorganic chemistry, and even biochemistry. We recall that hydrogen exists in three isotopes. And here we have symbols for each of the three isotopes. The number in the lower left hand corner, the Z value, is the atomic number. It tells us how many protons are in the nucleus. Since one nucleus is essentially saying the same thing as having a hydrogen atom, we notice that each of the isotopes of hydrogen has a one in the lower left hand corner. The number in the upper left hand corner is the A value or the atomic mass. It gives us the number of neutrons plus the number of protons in the nucleus. For ordinary hydrogen, it only has one proton, so its atomic mass is one. For the second isotope of hydrogen, it has one proton and one neutron, so it has a mass of two. This particular isotope of hydrogen also goes by the name of deuterium, deutero meaning second. And we sometimes use an elemental symbol that we invent, the letter D, to refer to deuterium. The third isotope of hydrogen has one proton and two neutrons, giving an atomic mass of three, and this isotope is known as tritium. Tritium, among other things, is a radioactive isotope. One of the most important bonds in organic chemistry and biochemistry is the single bond between carbon and hydrogen. And we can understand the bond better by comparing the bond between carbon and ordinary hydrogen. So from now on, I'm going to refer to ordinary hydrogen, hydrogen 1, as H in a blue color, and compare it to the bond between carbon and deuterium, where I show hydrogen 2 in red. It turns out, for reasons which we will discuss in the rest of the video, that it is easier to break a carbon-hydrogen bond than it is to break a carbon-deuterium bond, even though the elements involved are both carbon and hydrogen. Why would we care about this? Well, if we have a particular bond and we measure the rate of reaction when we have ordinary hydrogen, and we see that the rate changes when we replace the hydrogen with deuterium, it tells us that the breaking that carbon-hydrogen bond is the rate determining a step. So it is very important in determining the mechanisms of organic and biochemical reactions by seeing if there is a change in the rate when we replace hydrogen with deuterium. On one hand, if we change isotopes and the rate does not change, what that tells us is, is that particular carbon-hydrogen bond is not the critical bond that is not involved in the rate determining step. On the other hand, if the rate changes, and we'll see that the rate will go down when we replace hydrogen with deuterium, that tells us that particular carbon-hydrogen or carbon-deuterium bond is the bond that is rate determining for the reaction in question. Here we have sketched a potential energy diagram for a hydrogen-hydrogen bond. Notice that we have this, well, when the two atoms are very, very close together, the potential rises very, very high. Then it drops down to a minimum here. And this minimum is the equilibrium bond length. And then as the, bond, the uh, atoms become further and further away, Eventually, they reach a point where their energy equals zero. This is equivalent to the bond breaking and the two atoms being separated. So our zero of energy for a bond is when the bond is completely dissociated. The two most important points on the diagram are first, the R position along the uh, what would normally be the x-axis, here's the r-axis, and this particular distance where we reach the minimum is the equilibrium bond length.
So how far over? What is also super important is how deep the well is. And this depth of the well is the bond energy. Within this picture, the deeper the well, the greater the bond energy, the more stable the bond is. On the other hand, if I want to break this bond, I have to go from the bottom of the well up to the point where the energy is equal to zero because that is equivalent to the bond having broken. The deeper the well, the more stable the bond, the more energy I must put into the bond to break it and dissociate the bond. This classical picture omits a very important feature of quantum mechanics. The idea that even at absolute zero, there is still vibrational energy in the bond. So we can denote this vibrational energy by a line that we draw across here in pink. And this is the zero point energy. And because of the zero point energy, the lowest possible energy now for the bond is this line, not the bottom of the well. Therefore, rather than needing to go all the way from the bottom of the well up to zero, we need only put a less amount of energy, the amount of energy from the pink line up to the blue line. So we see because of the zero point energy effect, the actual energy required to break the bond, which is a more realistic bond energy, is different than we would predict entirely from the classical picture. The exact value of the zero point energy depends on the reduced mass of the atoms involved in the bond. And we'll show what that looks like uh, in just a second in a formal algebraic way. But for the time being, for representational purposes, let's assume that the line we're showing is the zero point energy for a deuterium deuterium bond. If we were to show what the zero point energy would be in the case of hydrogen with hydrogen, simple protium, we are gonna find that this value is actually higher. How we know that we will show in just a little bit, but for the time being, it's nice to have this representational picture. What does this mean? Well, if I'm going to break a hydrogen hydrogen bond, I need to go from here to here so I have to put the amount of energy that I show in the green line. On the other hand, if I want to break a deuterium-deuterium bond, I have to go from the pink line up to the blue line. So I'll draw this in black. And we notice it takes more energy, I have to go a further distance, to break the deuterium-deuterium bond than to break the hydrogen-hydrogen bond. Because at any given temperature, less energy will be available to break the bond. The deuterium-deuterium bond will break more slowly than the hydrogen-hydrogen bond. Therefore, any reactions that involve breaking the deuterium-deuterium bond will go more slowly than those involving hydrogen with hydrogen. So it's nice at first to have a pictorial representation of what we're getting at. And we're gonna see right now in an algebraic form how we know that the zero point energy for deuterium is less than for hydrogen, and then how we can uh, approach this computationally. The vibrational energy of a molecule depends upon the level n, and it's equal to n plus a half times h bar, this is the reduced Planck's constant, times the square root of this expression, where k is the, the bond strength uh, which is a sort of a strength of a spring. So the stronger the bond, the larger the value of K, divided by this value mu, which is the reduced mass of the atoms involved in the bond. And also importantly, the allowed values of N are 0, 1, 2, 3, and any non-negative integer. And it's a very important feature of vibrational energy that the lowest possible value is actually n equals zero. The lowest possible vibrational energy 
e sub zero, when n is equal to zero, we call the zero point vibrational energy. So we have in a closed form the value. Important things to notice here, if we're comparing bonds that involve isotopes of exactly the same elements, we know that H bar is a constant for all, all of nature. This K, the strength of the bond, depends entirely on electronic factors. So it depends upon how many electrons and how many protons are involved. And this will not change as we go from protium to deuterium. On the other hand, the reduced mass will change. So I have a video which you can look up up here of certain approximations that we can make with the reduced mass. The important thing to notice is that the reduced mass of hydrogen in terms of atomic mass units is going to be approximately one half, whereas the reduced mass for deuterium is going to be one. Therefore, the reduced mass of deuterium is twice that of hydrogen. So if we're comparing the zero point energies for hydrogen with hydrogen, as compared to deuterium with deuterium, in the case of deuterium, since the reduced mass is greater, we have a greater value in the denominator. So therefore, its zero point energy will be less than for ordinary hydrogen. So if this doesn't ring a bell, you can backspace the video to look at the diagram from a couple minutes ago to see and remind ourselves, yes, that the pink line, the line for the zero point energy of deuterium was lower than the blue line that we had for the zero point energy of hydrogen. And this is exactly the way that we arrived at that conclusion theoretically. So therefore, as we noticed, because of the zero point energy contribution, that to actually break a deuterium-deuterium bond takes more energy than to break a hydrogen-hydrogen bond. And by extrapolation, we're looking at the simplest possible case here. If we are comparing a carbon-hydrogen to a carbon-deuterium bond, it's going to take more energy to break the carbon-deuterium bond than to break the carbon-hydrogen bond. Again, entirely because of this quantum mechanical zero point energy phenomenon. Now we will look at it from the computational chemistry perspective. Suppose I do a frequency calculation and geometry optimization on hydrogen, hydrogen and deuterium, deuterium. Those are my two cases I'm going to look at. And in both cases, I'm going to use the B3LYP method and the basis set is going to be 6-311G star star. And if you're not sure what those mean, I advise you, you can look at this particular video for a refresher on Popple style basis sets. When we do a single point energy calculation, which we did here also at the exact same level as we did the frequency calculation, this single point energy calculation gives us the electronic energy of the molecule at absolute zero. This is equivalent to the thermodynamic property of the internal energy. In some books, they use the letter U, and in some books, they use the letter E. Just know that we're referring to the thermodynamic internal energy. And specifically, this is the value for the molecule at absolute zero. So we want to compare the results of our uh, computational chemistry calculation for the two different molecules for this one particular quantity, which is often goes by the name of the single point energy. You might be quite surprised to find that the electronic energies for hydrogen and hydrogen and deuterium and deuterium are absolutely identical. So we have minus 1.795710, and the units are atomic units, also known as Hartree's. One Hartree is equivalent roughly to 627.5095 kcals per mole. But the important thing is to notice from the point of view of the electronic energy at absolute zero, they are absolutely identical. 
at the end of the frequency calculation, one of the valuable bits of information that is provided by the program is the vibrational frequency for all the bonds in the molecule. For our case here, we only have a single bond. But it's important to notice that the results for the hydrogen-hydrogen gives us a value of 4,419 wave numbers, whereas for the deuterium-deuterium bond, we have substantial change in frequency to 3,126 inverse centimeters, or wave numbers. Because the energy of a bond depends partially on the frequency, we see that we'd expect to get a change in the a zero point energy of vibration when we have this such a massive change in the frequency of the vibration. One of the key results that's provided at the end of a frequency calculation is the value of this zero point energy. And here again we see a massive difference between the value for hydrogen hydrogen 0 0.012 Hartree's as opposed to the value for deuterium which is 0 0.07122. So our prediction that the zero point energy for deuterium was going to be less than for hydrogen turns out to be true. Now, one thing you may notice is that the value of the zero point energy, at least in the case of hydrogen or deuterium, seems to be a very small value compared to the electronic energy. That is true in this case, but one needs to remember that in larger, more complicated molecules, the number of vibrational degrees of freedom increases very quickly. So particularly for mid to large size molecules, the size of the zero point energy is a very, very important percentage of the total energy of the molecule. And we know, even in the case of hydrogen deuterium, that this difference in the zero point energy can lead to significant experimental consequences. The difference in energy between a carbon-hydrogen and a carbon-deuterium bond and its subsequent effect on the kinetics of the reaction. I thank you very much for your attention. As always, have a good one.